Hi and welcome, I'm Tom, your host, and this is the Dropcast Movie Poster Podcast. This format is part of the Instagram blog Drop, and you can find us under at DropMacOfficial, and we do reviews, news, and interviews that all have to do with the film business. And today we will have a chat with the not enough mentioned Sister Hyde, aka Drizilla Adeline, who brings a total different perspective to the poster game. So stay tuned and head, our, uh, head over to our Instagram profile at DropMacOfficial to follow along with the art we are talking about, or check us out on YouTube for the video version. So now let's get started. Drew, welcome. How are you? Hey, I'm good, Tom. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, I'm glad to have you on. As you know, since, since I uh, always try to like switch it up, it's because um, we talked in, in the off before uh, the, about the situation in uh, design and illustration out there for minorities and women and all of that. So that's why I always try to switch it up between uh, a man and um, or like in a binary thinking woman or uh, a minority that is not featured enough. So this is very hard and uh, to find actually more uh, minorities in that case. So to have on instead of men, because this is such a, such a man's world, you could say. It is, but thankfully there's a lot of artists of color and women of color and non-binary folks in the art and design community these days that are starting to kind of like pop up uh and really make amazing work so i think there's there's a strong group kind of coming to the forefront nowadays Hmm. that's that's it's a that's a very good thing and i uh, really uh want to push that and uh, have those voices also be heard in uh, the podcast and as well more in the community. So this is really cool that you show up and um, the, the we, we're going to record this on Monday and uh, the release is going to be next week on Friday. I mean this week, not mm-hmm. next week, this week on Friday. So this is going to be this is going to be fun. And um, I'm glad that more people are uh, seeing this side of the business as well. So to start out, I always try to pick three different um, posters of yours and or of the artist that I'm talking to. And I picked for the first one, Taxi Driver of yours. Oh, yeah. How, how did this happen? Because like, as, as I mentioned in my little introduction, um, you have a total different style from what you can see. I mean... Um, I have I, I haven't seen your poster so far to like to collect basically because like as you can see in the background I collect a lot of different posters yeah and your style is totally different from this one so um, I, I, tell us a little bit something about this taxi driver piece. Well, uh, in 2018, I did a project of a poster a day inspired by Scott Soslow, mm-hmm. who's an amazing artist and a friend of mine. Yeah, he was um, he was our kind of... he was the first guest of the of our show so. He's a great first guest. Um, <laughs> he did the same project a couple years ago and inspired me to do it as like a good thought exercise and to kind of like sharpen my tools. And like I was working a full time job as a, a designer at a streaming service. And I was like, screw it. I'll do this on my lunch break, do one in like an hour uh, and then post it every day. And I from the beginning was like, I should probably do Taxi Driver, at least a Scorsese movie. Um and Taxi Driver has been done to death. So I was like, I got to find something that's different or interesting. Um, and so I just kind of leaned into the punk nature of that movie because that movie has like famously been co-opted by the punk scene, like because it's De Niro in a mohawk shooting politicians, um, which is a big deal. And like The Clash sampled it on a couple tracks on their last album and like Scorsese was friends with the clash and it's just a whole thing. So I rebuilt De Niro's Mohawk out of bullets, use the New York, uh, map behind him to give it a nice texturing and then just like washed it out in taxi driver yellow. Um, and then dropped all the titling into his head. Um, cause it seemed like the logical thing to do. Um, but again, like I said, they were all really done in an hour. Mm-hmm. All those ones I did in 2018, just during my lunch break. So mm-hmm. that was a really quick build. Um, and I'm really proud of how it came out. I think it looks really good. And I've done a lot more Scorsese stuff since then. <laughs> and yeah, a little more official did. quality. Yeah, 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 you did. I, I have that in the cover, of course. Uh, we, we saw a little bit earlier. Um, your Scorsese shorts, for example, is in there. So mm-hmm. that's, uh, that's the newest project, right? Yeah, with the the Criterion Collection. It's a set of five of his short films from the late 60s to the Mm mid-70s. And uh, for the taxi driver, is it it also, did you use the map because he's a taxi driver? 
or is it just yeah and just to yeah. bring that new york quality mm. into there because i was just i don't know like new york is so deeply tied into so many different films that you couldn't take it out you have to include that in there mm -hmm. and i was <laughs> trying to be as maximalist as possible in a short amount of time and with mm -hmm. a limited amount of material to work with so you know fuck it map <laughs> um very, and I as mean, people have pointed fitting. out since then it looks a lot like jay shaw's repo man poster which i was not intending but mm -hmm. it's one of my favorite things so it's absolutely in the back of my brain and so i was probably thinking about that <laughs> yeah and also like the in the bottom as you can see like the credits they are also different from from the usual style and i think that's a that's a you i think you, the the this way of incorporating the credits comes through uh, in different uh, artworks of yours that that it's not the norm and that oh, i think that's you. really cool there's there's a lot of there's a lot of similar ways of doing a billing block and doing your credits and i mean that's fine and you can do that and that uh, gets a job done usually with legal copy like mm -hmm. that if you're doing an official piece um is going to be really hard to do in a way outside of that norm because mm -hmm. the legal restraints are strong and there for a reason but if you can find a more creative way of incorporating that it immediately pops off the page and kind of makes the whole design mm -hmm. a little bit tighter because yeah. it's a little more unexpected than just having your like exactly six flat lines at the bottom <laughs> exactly that's i i think it's very cool and it fits perfectly into this kind of image i really enjoy it okay the second one i want to i wanted to a little know know a little bit more about was of course, Christiane F. Since it's a German oh, movie, movie, Berlin movie. How, how how did you hear about it? How how did you come in contact with the movie? Like first off, well, I'm a gigantic David Bowie fan. All right. And so I had been given a bunch of Bowie records by my stepfather. One of them was the soundtrack to the film. Okay, that's cool. Uh, which has a lot of German uh, language versions of his songs, yeah. which are superior to the English language versions. If you ask me. <laughs> um the german version of heroes is amazing <laughs> um and so i started the poster day project in 2018 i started on january 1st 2018 with phantom thread mm -hmm. uh, and this was like my third or fourth poster okay um and it's because on new year's eve 2017 going into 2018 the new beverly cinema here in los angeles owned by quentin tarantino mm -hmm. Um, was going to be closing down for 2018 for renovations. Mm -hmm. And their last showing was of Christian F. and Durfan mm -hmm. as their like New Year's Eve midnight double bill, <laughs> okay. which is a fucked up yep. double. Yeah. Um, and Christian F. was the second film. <laughs> so we got through all the cannibalism and all the fun stuff. Mm -hmm. And then we got two hours of depression depressing 14 year old heroin addicts and i bawled my eyes out at midnight mm -hmm. in the middle of the theater to this movie and then like walked home alone yeah because my old apartment was like within walking distance of that theater uh -huh. um and it really 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 deeply affected me and i loved it so much so it was one of the first ones that when i was starting this project i immediately went home and started sketching mm -hmm. um and so it was like okay cool Bowie obsession, teenage angst, heroin <laughs> addiction. Um, I had a couple like dollar store Christmas records mm -hmm. that I had bought um, recently because it was, you know, end of the year yeah. around Christmas time. And so I just took them, took a hammer and smashed them over my kitchen sink. Oh, you, you, um, this is actually from your record collection? Yeah. Okay. I, I took a couple like dollars have been Christmas records yeah smash them with a hammer uh, and then photograph them in my kitchen and then i took out a bowie record and i photographed oh, okay. the mm -hmm. um i was not no bowie records were destroyed <laughs> in the creation of this I, I took a photo of the label and then i photoshopped the label yeah. onto the smashed pieces okay um and then i tossed the needle in there because Okay, because because I was wondering, my next question would have been: uh, Is 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 there something to see in the shards like of <laughs> of the record? It's like I, I wasn't smart enough at that time to try and do that. Yeah, I should have. That would have been really cool. 
I guess the only thing to look for is that's an actual Bowie label yeah. <laughs> from an original pressing. <laughs> um, I want to say that it's Young Americans. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. It is. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I, I, yeah, I was wondering maybe is is that a face? Is is, is what is that supposed to be Christiana F or uh, what, what what is this? <laughs> I was not good enough at that time to do that, but I would love to revisit that and do it now. I, I just want to say, yeah, re please yeah. revisit that. I would be really uh, looking forward to that because, like you know, this is this is the one of the things. Um, since since I'm in Germany here, um, I always try to like push the scene and maybe have more studios like the uh, at least the german side of the studio um include more alternative poster art or maybe different kind of artists that do in my opinion a little better work than uh, floating heads and uh <laughs> so i i will have to see though if, if that's going to happen but it's in the future and um yeah, maybe um, you're going to do a German movie then at some point. <laughs> I would love to. I love German cinema. I love Fassbender. And mm -hmm. I just like big, big, big. I, and I love Christian F so much. And I want it to get re-released here in America because mm -hmm. it's been impossible to find here. Mm -hmm. I think we had a DVD like 20 years ago. <laughs> I think I think it There's was... There's been nothing since then. I think it was just remastered. I, I think I found it just... I saw it just the other day, but I'm not sure. Well, U.S. companies should uh, <laughs> yeah. put their efforts towards that. Maybe. It's a great film. It's not it is. a fun it is. movie. Of course not. But it's a great, great, great movie. And it's a crazy true story. I mean, there, there has been a couple other um, follow-ups, I think, on that matter. Oh, wow. So um, I mean, it's got a happy ending. <laughs> it, it does. For what it's worth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, there was, I think there was something that was... Some documentaries that showed her like when she was clean and when then she had she uh got back on the drugs again and stuff like that so it's like crazy oh, stuff that's going mm. on i don't want to know that i just want to live in the blissful happy ending of the movie <laughs> not the real life genuine trauma of yep, yep, yep. drug addiction and recidivism it's it's crazy it's no, crazy stuff you. but um but, but but what is your favorite uh german movie and and do you have one or is it Christian F? My favorite German movie, and this is absolutely a gigantic cheat because <laughs> it's technically a TV production. It's okay. And I don't care. Uh, but it's Ryan Havana Fassbender's uh, Eight Hours to Make mm -hmm. His Eight Hour um, TV Commissioned Socialist Family Workers Drama. Yeah. Um, it is gorgeous i love it so much they re-released it here in the state or they re released it for the first time here in the states two years ago mm -hmm. and i got the poster from janice films for it that i have up in my bedroom now and i saw it in one sitting at the egyptian theater here in hollywood and it just like bowled me over i've never had that kind of a visceral experience watching a movie before mm -hmm. um it's a very radicalizing movie for just being about like a family and like people falling in love mm. but it's also about workers rights and <laughs> um going against like local government and it's really 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 good and the mute cute is based around pickles from a vending machine mm -hmm. and i love it so much i'm a gigantic fastbender fan and when he can suddenly spin out a saccharine, like, proletariat drama, yeah. I am all for it. <laughs> it was like a big documentary. One of my uh, ex-girlfriends, she did a documentary on him with the, with the Berlin studio here. She was like a producer on it. And uh, they, they had even, they, they had like little cutouts, uh, like, like live, no, not little, like life-size cutouts of Werner uh, Fassbinder. And uh, they had it like placed around, like when the release was uh, in the city. So that was kind of fun. I need one of those for my house for reasons. Yeah, I will. I will. I will look into that. <laughs> <laughs> and um, did you did you uh, hear about the new one? The, uh, Be you know, he made Berlin Alexanderplatz. Yes, yeah. I love Berlin Alexanderplatz. And there, he, there, there's a new version of it. Did you did you hear about that? Yeah, I picked up the Criterion release here in the states when they put that disc out. The I know there. The the old one or the new one? Did they put the new one out already? The new restoration? No, not the restoration. There's a like oh, a, a new like restoration? a remake, yeah, like a three-hour remake, like with really? with like uh, with like looking at um, like the the African refugee like perspective and drug dealing and all of that. It's like a crazy story. It's like a really good movie. It won the 
I, what did it win? No, it, it did not win because System Crusher. Did you see that one? Oh yeah. System Crusher. Won I didn't all. see it, but I know System Crusher. Yeah, yeah. It, it won all all the awards here. So. <laughs> Yeah, I, I know the studio that puts System Crasher out here in the States, and it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Did, did you watch it yet, or? I haven't. I've seen the trailer, and I've seen a lot of the stuff from it, and I'm, like, itching to get my copy of it. <laughs> yeah. It, it's been, like, it's it's been a really, really cool one. I really enjoyed this one. Uh, System Crasher was, I mean, the acting was great. No wonder they won so much. And I I wonder why they uh, why they um, why the Oscars didn't like do anything about it. I don't know. But may- but what's this new version of Berlin? Because like I I love the fact that there was a 1930s version mm-hmm. of it done that's like 90 minutes long, and then Fassman did his like 16 hour one, yeah, and yeah, now yeah. we're getting a three hour one. <laughs> Yeah, it's a uh, it's a three hour run uh, on that, and it's um I think they did I think they did a really cool job. You should check out the trailer. I, some some parts is there, I think there's even a, like a the the like a dubbed version or at least subtitled version of it. So that's uh, mm-hmm. a really cool thing uh, to look at. And is it still based on the Alfred Doblin novel? I think it is, but I think that's like mm-hmm. like a modern touch of it. Oh, that's awesome! But I was gonna say because that that book deals with uh, some very specific parts of Weimar Germany that mm-hmm. like are way too akin to modern day America. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, um, I, th- I will, I, I can send you the link later so you can check it out. Um, but oh, we'll, please, we'll please talk please. about it. Okay. And the third one uh, I wanted to talk about is suspiciously large woman. That's, uh, that's this is a very interesting pick. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm a big, I'm a big RuPaul fan. Oops. I'm a big RuPaul uh, Drag Race fan, and um, I just watched a new episode, All Stars, already la- uh, from from Friday, I think, or when it came out. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm I, kn- I know who Bob the Drag Queen is, and I also love We Are. <laughs> I, I know uh, I also um, I love We Are Here, w- which he's also in, and um, yeah. so I wondered how you fit in all of this, and how you made those kind of posters, and what Reverie is, because I don't know what Reverie is. I used to work for Reverie. Mm-hmm. It's an LGBTQ-based streaming platform. Okay. Um, don't really think they're around much anymore, but, um, they released this stand-up special that Bob did mm-hmm. called Suspiciously Large Woman. Um, and because it hadn't been released before, it didn't have any key art and I was the in-house art director. Okay. It slid to my plate and we had one photograph of Bob, <laughs> um, which this was it. And so uh, it's a great title to the special, which is Suspiciously Large Woman. Yeah. So I was like, all right, I'm going to treat this like Attack the 500, uh, the 50-foot Woman or like a Godzilla movie. Yeah. Blew the head up as much as possible. So it was just peeking over the edge. Yeah, and I think I think that, um, that fits in with the suspicious part as well. <laughs> I mean, Yeah, it's a sneaky look yeah. with the crown um, really like taking up the majority of the frame. Yeah. Um, and then a nice kind of like simple but still stylish title yeah. room and over it was really simple really clean and again it was the kind of thing that like it was working within uh, a distributor with licensing stuff so yeah the simpler the better gets the quicker uh gets the quicker pass on a lot of those things so i think that's the primary key art for the special now i have no clue i'm yeah I know it's with a different distributor now, I think. So Okay, okay. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, who knows? But um is, is there any like um did did you meet like Bob or something like that? In that case, did he talk I about met it? Bob, I met Bob after this. I met Bob because in also in twenty eighteen I went up to San Francisco mm-hmm. to the Castro Theater to film because I'm also occasionally a cinematographer yeah. to film um uh, a drag roast comedy special okay. that Bob was one of the surprise guests mm-hmm. that came out halfway through to roast. Um, okay. I don't even remember what track, <laughs> <queen>. <laughs> um, but I got to meet Bob and all the other Queens before and after in like the Castro theater mm-hmm. in San Francisco. Okay, cool. It was a very like, it was a wild day. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. And, um, uh, how did how did you like the the do you watch the, the RuPaul's all, uh, Drag Race as well or is that not something not for you? 
I don't I don't watch RuPaul. <laughs> okay, okay, good. Because I was wondering, because like they did such a bad job. I mean, the the because the oh I've heard the the a lot of my friends watch and they've been yeah the 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 final uh, episode of the last season was horrible. In my, in my I've been I've been watching I've been watching the Twitter feeds <laughs> okay about it, but I have been I did. I'm a big fan of uh, the Boulay Brothers Dragula, yeah. which is like the horror version. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and it's on Netflix, and it's so good. It's so good. I mean, and it's a great, like, slightly more diverse, like, offering of drag performers, drag kings, drag yeah. queens. It's really good, and the drama behind it all is also <laughs> amazing. There's a couple truly wild moments on that show. Yeah. It, um... I forgot where, I, oh yeah by the way uh because uh, you said dracula i mean there's what, what's up with all the dracula puns i mean come on i'm always down for i'm a gigantic vampire fan yeah and dracula is my favorite book so okay the more that you can poke fun i at mean the count the more i'm on board i think it's absolutely fun dracula blackula there's everything everything did, did i love black yeah, i was just I want to ask do you watch that movie oh my god that's so hilarious right i love that movie the sequel with pam greer yeah. is really good scream blackula scream <laughs> yeah it's so so much good black exploitation uh, movies from that time there was like they they did a really cool job even like I, i'm a big fan of the soundtrack it's, Uh, they put out this time, oh yeah so, and the movies are also fun i mean the I, i love that they did dolomite on netflix with um um oh with Eddie Murphy. yeah exactly and um yeah. what's his name i forgot his name what's his dolomite the real name ray broody moore Rudy ray moore. Rudy ray moore this way okay yeah yeah so that was yeah that's really cool stuff they they did back then it was very weird to watch a dol a movie about dolomite with my mother <laughs> <laughs> How did she react? She was like, "There's a new Eddie Murphy movie," and I was like, "Okay, like you know, it's about Dolomite, right?" <laughs> <laughs> and what did she say? She liked it. She liked. She we yeah, we watched it together and she enjoyed it. But like, I was like, "There's no way we're watching Disco Godfather together after this. <laughs> like, it's not happening." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, perfect, perfect. Okay, um, so this is like to start out, but uh, I wanted to get to know you a little bit more. So how did you start out? How did you go to university? Did you have an apprenticeship at some point? Or um, how did you get into this business? I started doing design in like high school and college because I was in a bunch of punk bands mm -hmm. in the Midwest. And we would need album covers or flyers and you know, mm -hmm. shit to post around to get people to come to our shows yeah. and stuff. Um, and like, I don't know, there was Photoshop on the computers at school. Yeah. So I taught myself how to use Photoshop to do that. Mm -hmm. um, to just make these grungy little dumb things. Mm -hmm. um, and then I went to college for filmmaking. Okay. I Which, can uh, I ask, major which university? I went to Columbia in Chicago. Okay. Um, so I studied experimental directing there under Ted Harden, um, which was nice and fine and great, but I didn't get a lot of work done and the yeah. films I made didn't do anywhere near as well as I would have hoped they would have. Mm -hmm. Um, but people really liked my title sequences in my films. <laughs> what, what kind of films did you make? I mean, which, which direction? Um, I made a couple horror films, which played festivals, mm -hmm. um, which I'm the most proud of now. Um, and then I made a lot of experimental films that like, yeah, <laughs> no one could sit through, <laughs> which is fine. And that's good. And I was trying things. Um, and then I made a couple documentaries, mm -hmm. um, which is less my cup of tea, but you know, that's what people wanted. So it's what I made. Yeah. Um, but then I moved out to Los Angeles um, to do my last semester of college and I stumbled ass backwards into a job as a designer mm -hmm. initially as an editor and then wound my way up as a designer and art director for Reverie that LGBTQ streaming mm -hmm. service um, and so I did all the brand identity designed all of their apps and platforms posters for every piece of content that came through And I was kind of like, you know, I'm getting good enough at this that I could probably <laughs> do this how, full time. And I like how long? How long was it? How uh, did you have like a certain? I worked there for three years. Okay. Um, and in 2018 was when I did my poster a day project because I kind of realized like 
I enjoy doing this enough, and I love movie posters. Mm -hmm. I collect vintage movie posters, and I love, like, Arrow Video and the Criterion Collection Mm -hmm. and these, like, gorgeous home video packages and presentations. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I love that kind of art. I could probably do that kind of art since I'm basically already doing it for a living. Mm -hmm. Um, So let me try doing some stuff on my own. And so I did the year of uh, posters in 2018, 365 posters, one a day on my Instagram account, which was insane. Mm -hmm. And that started getting me some work with indie filmmakers. Okay, cool. And I was like, okay, maybe I could do this more often. Um, And then I got brought in by a couple agencies here in LA Mm -hmm. and I got to work with some amazing designers out here. Um, and then it stayed consistent enough that I was able to leave, um, the company I was working at and kind of go full time as a freelancer. And I started sister Hyde design, um, as my banner, um, to work underneath. And since then it's been two years of that now. And, you know, I've done, posters for theatrical releases of horror movies, independent melodramas <laughs> for Blu-ray releases of French porn films from the seventies to yep, why not <laughs> uh, David Lynch and Martin Scorsese films with the Criterion Collection, um, Maya Darren's films with Keanu Lorber on Blu-ray. Mm. Um um, a wild spattering of stuff. And I'm happy to say I've still got more stuff in the pipeline. Um, some really cool stuff should be dropping in the next week or so. Um, yeah. And can't, can't wait. You know, I'm keeping the lights on. Can't, can't wait to see that. And um, you sent me a couple of uh, posters as well. Is is, is there an, and the albums as well? Which one could I show like to um, show to people how you started out? Which ones are the, like the first ones? Are all those? This. Oh yeah, show any of my earlier stuff that I sent across. Yeah, I, it's not good. <laughs> it's not, let let me say well, that. What now. what should I show then? I have cheese. Dr- oh god. Should I should I do cheese? I'm gonna do cheese now. What, what can okay. you say something this about that? This is just a weird. This is just a weird collage piece that I did mm-hmm. for a band that I was in in college. Mm-hmm. Um, the album title was a bit of a joke. Yeah making fun of Kanye West <laughs> okay because that's a man who deserves to be ridiculed yeah. um uh the album <laughs> was titled Jesus which is yeah. dumb as shit <laughs> um and so I was like all right I'm gonna make a stupid weird collage for this because I was listening to a lot of late 80s uh like East Bay punk mm-hmm. and I was like I just want to make it look like one of those records <laughs> so I just tossed a bunch of shit in Photoshop and played around with it yeah. a lot of those album covers are very uh i had a single idea and i ran with it in the weirdest way possible Mm. one of the other ones is um literally a photo of a table at taco bell which is it the dead ringers one or which one is it no it's i don't even know how these are labeled it's it's video drones the risk phase it's literally three stripes oh that's this one oh i got it i got it type it's yeah. it's it's a table from Taco Bell. Oh, I was at a Taco Bell that hadn't Got been it. renovated since Got the it. 80s or 90s, so it still had that like teal and pink aesthetic. Yeah, and I was just at 2 a.m. in Chicago in like Wrigleyville. Well, uh, and I was sitting there with friends, and I was like, you know what, <laughs> that would make a good thing. Take a photo of the table with my iPhone. <laughs> uh, just sat on it for a while, yeah. and then I texted it to my guitarist, and I was like, album cover. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you would fool me, man. <laughs> so it looks good yeah it, it definitely does i mean the colors work so it's perfect and um you also sent me some posters uh, which one should i show off that one i got beautiful here driver and i got the yeah the efs these are a spattering things these are like a spattering of posters that i made for my films when i was in college mm-hmm. uh and then just posters that i made in photoshop on my own when i was in college for films i was watching at the time mm-hmm. so there's like uh, Walter Hill's The Driver was one of them. Um, but then uh, Beautiful was a short, a horror short film that I did inspired by Jen Lynch's um, Boxing Helena. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the Friday poster might be the best of that bunch, okay. I want to say. Okay. Okay. It's a short that I did in college. Yeah. Uh, 
and it's it's a close up shot from the end of the film <laughs> okay. of a face, and then some typography. I don't know. It's just a nice shot. <laughs> I understand. Yeah, all all of the posters that I did in college were basically like. I had a still from one of my films mm -hmm. and I put some typography on top of it because I needed a poster for a festival. Yeah, yeah, I know it and is. Here it is. We, we just went through that. Uh, a friend of mine, um, he he does, uh, he makes it like horror short films, but mm -hmm. they always like, he always try to, uh, tries or has included a social, social message. And the first one that like, I like, think 1.5 million views on YouTube already. And, um, it it was called take off your clothes it was about fast fashion and oh, uh, yeah. so that's kind of cool and then they just made a new one which which is called follow and um Dolly actually made that poster for him so that was kind of cool. oh wow holy shit yep, yep yep Dolly's amazing yeah he's he's really great he was uh two weeks ago I think yeah two weeks ago we had him on oh so. yeah that, that was kind of cool. And yeah, he made the poster for that because they also needed the poster for the festival. So <laughs> let's see how this one is going to turn out. And it's about like like following on Instagram and needing those followers and like wanting more and more. And it's like, it's it's a cool concept they, they use there. Um, what What is the Experimental Film Society? Can you tell me something more about that? So when I was in college, I uh, was studying experimental film and I was working under my professor, Ted Harden who ran the Experimental Film Society. Mm -hmm. um, and me and another student named Brianna kind of took it over in my sophomore year mm -hmm. of college um, to program films and kind of like build interest in these weird ass <laughs> experimental films. And so I mocked up uh, some posters for the for the Film Society. Mm -hmm. um, and they're, you know, everything from John Waters' Pink Flamingos to uh, Christian Benjamin's, uh, Benjamin Christensen? Yeah. Haxon, mm -hmm. um, Witchcraft of the Ages, and um, uh, Dushan Makavev's uh, WR, Mysteries of the Organism. And basically it was a wish list of all the movies I wanted to <laughs> force my college friends yeah. to see. Um and then actually the film society was taking over after I left school by a friend of mine named Abby Mattingly, who's an amazing artist. And she did the posters mm -hmm. for the society while she was there and they're better than mine. Oh <laughs> man. That, uh... cause she's much more of an illustrator than I am. Okay. And she's, she's amazing. And she does a lot of great album work. So, okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah. So yeah, we, we have a shout out section later, so we, we can, we can thank her and shout her out. <laughs> okay. Um, my next question uh, is uh, since like the, the channel, we do like a lot of uh, uh, German movie reviews and uh, not, not of German movies, but movie reviews in German. And um, I was wondering what was the last movie you saw? Uh, I've been watching a lot of stuff lately because I like to have stuff on in the background while I work, which is a bad thing to do, mm -hmm. but I do it anyway. Yeah, uh, uh. Um, and I've also been enjoying quarantine time with my partner, watching a lot of rom-coms mm -hmm. and catching up on, new releases but i'm still entirely too behind on all the stuff that's dropping lately mm -hmm. i mean i just watched spike lee's the five blood yeah I, I i just pulled up the poster and i had a chance on our the last release poster podcast i talked to victoria casanova who actually did this poster so that was uh, really cool oh, so wow. if you if you into that check check out the last podcast that we talked about it and it's like she um she had some, some really cool stuff to say about the poster it's a great poster and akiko sternberger did a poster for exactly. it and mm -hmm. The the whole package that Gravillas did mm -hmm. for for that film is really phenomenal. Yeah, and um, which is exactly what I expect from and, them. So. And they were all sold at um, at uh, on Spike Lee's uh, shop on on his website yeah. for yeah 100, I think hundred dollars and I think they're all sold out now. So. <laughs> Oh, yeah. No, I, I checked in when they first came up, and I was like, well, I'll wait until I see the movie to see if I like it. And of course I fucking yeah, liked it. Yeah, yeah. What's not to like, huh? <laughs> I've, yet, I, I've yet to see a Spike Lee film ha I haven't liked. I so. mean, I mean, you like horror and stuff like that, but uh, how, do, how did you cope with uh, violence, I'd say? Because like, there was like, because I was wondering, I asked Victoria the same question, and she said, it, basically, yeah, it's necessary, and uh, I think you have to go through that. But uh, I wondered, on a different standpoint, because my colleague, Yulia, she always like... She's like very anti anti violence, and uh, she said, "Yeah, I I could have done without it." And I would say so at some point. It's like some scenes and some things I could have done it without as well. But what is your stance on it? 
I mean, I I love horror movies. I love seeing all that stuff. However, it's war movies that really rattle me the most and upset me the most because that's real. And that's something that, like, we don't have to, like, fantasize about. That's going on right now, mm-hmm. and it's still going on, and it's been going on. Um, and it's truly nightmarish. And so watching, I thought the movie did a really, really good job of humanizing these characters a lot more. Mm-hmm. Like, there's a sequence where it flashes back to when they were in Vietnam. Yeah. In that's that's, that's one of my favorite parts, 70s. I have to say. Yeah, with Chadwick Boseman, and there's a scene in which um, Vietnamese soldiers are coming over a hill as they're all waiting to ambush Mm -hmm. them, and the dialogue that these soldiers have is translated, which is not something that you ever see in a Vietnam film. Normally, it's just enemy comes over, they speak to each other in some foreign language, Mm -hmm. then they are murdered, but these Vietnamese soldiers coming over the hill, and they're just having like a standard conversation mm-hmm. about their girlfriends and when they get back and yeah. like and leaving home for, and then they're just eviscerated mm-hmm. by our heroes and, and it's just like that's what that's that's yeah. one of the most affecting things i've seen in a while i, was... I mean the whole the point the movie's very provocative and he's making a very strong message with it but yeah. the idea that like these men are just propagating violence done upon them onto other people and it does not fucking end well. I mean, it's not it's not a coincidence that Delroy Lindo's character is supposed to be a Trump supporter. Mm. Like, yeah. It's gross and it's bad, but it's like, it's like, that is absolutely the kind of man who would go off to Vietnam and it's also the absolutely the kind of thing that a man traumatized by what he's seen there would fall into. Um, it's an upsetting movie. It's, Black Klansman was a lot of fun, and I'm so glad that Spike is back in the public consciousness the way he is. Um, but even Black Klansman had teeth, and yeah. Defy Five Bloods really has teeth, man. Yeah, it's it's a tough watch. That that landmine scene. <sighs> yeah, I was on the edge of my the yeah. whole rope bit. I, I think was edge of everybody, my everybody I, like, was on. <laughs> I have not a seen a scene that tense since like Wages of Fear, I, like. I, I thought it was uh, I thought it's gonna happen earlier when they were looking for the gold. I thought yes, yeah. I did too. I was stressed that entire yeah 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 me too when me they're too. just like banging around in the dirt. Yeah, like, no, somebody's gonna hammer on the mine. Yeah, exactly. Ugh. And well, the entire from the beginning of the movie, and I don't want to be too spoilery, but there's a character that I'm like, I love him. I love him so much. He's the nice one. He's gonna die, isn't he? <laughs> I was like, no, 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 no. God damn it! I literally knew as it like. Like, I had, like, premonition, like, right before it happens. Yeah. like, you son of a bitch. Boom. I was like, God damn it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When it was happening, it was like, oh, come on. Come on. Come on. It's going to happen now. It's like. Yup. But, yeah. Okay. No, it's it's a really amazing yeah. movie. And I'm glad that it's being released by Netflix right now. Mm-hmm. Because it means that a lot of people are going to watch it. Mm-hmm. Which is exactly what a movie like that needs. Is just for people to see it as much as yeah. possible. Because it's great and it's worth seeing um, and then to talk about it and that's exactly what a movie like that is built for yeah exactly and um that's that's also very important i really in, enjoyed that movie um for what it is and what kind of message is it tries to push um or messages in, in that case and um the only thing i didn't like was the, as i said the the violence at, at some point i didn't like when they sh- like the, the this one scene where a Vietnamese um, Vietnamese person gets shot by this general kind of type, you know what I'm talking about? Like, and you see, yeah, yeah, that, that was like that was like okay, that's a that's very tough, I'd say. And it's like very is, is that movie rated R? I think I didn't have to punch in. Like, I, it has to be. I, yeah, I'm gonna say it is. Just but I don't remember that I had the amount of gore and language that's in that. Yeah, is, it has but to I be. I think I I don't remember that I had to punch in my my little like the the the, the children's lock on Netflix here. So you know, do you know what I'm talking about? The pin. But yeah, so yeah. I, I think I didn't have to punch that in, but I'm not sure. But um, yeah, so that was kind of crazy. And uh, I, also at some points, like the story was a little bit thin. But uh, other other than that, it was. It is, but at the same time, it's it's kind of like a modern update on Treasure of the Sierra Madre, mm-hmm, yeah. which is Spike Lee's favorite movie. Mm-hmm. And 
I really appreciate that because I love that movie. And I think they did a really good job of kind of bringing that narrative into a contemporary setting mm-hmm. and giving it, giving it a little more backbone, yeah. um, which I like. Like they, they even have the homage to it when the, um, and the contemporary sequence when the Vietnamese, um, uh, like officials come and stop them when they're trying to get mm-hmm. back to their car. Uh, and they say, well, where are your badges? And they say, we don't need any badges. And I'm like, yep. <laughs> yep, there it is. There's the treasures here in Montreal. <laughs> yeah. Um, did you watch anything else uh, you want to talk about? Um, yeah, I finally saw 9 to 5. <laughs> 9 to 5 to survive, huh? Yeah, 9 to 5 with Jolly Parton and uh, is, and Jane Fonda and Lily Tomlin. Is that, I'd never seen is that in, uh, like, because you gave me the German poster. I did, because the German poster is the best poster. Okay, I was wondering if there was a purpose. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Um, there's a Polish poster that's also really yeah. new with Dabney Coleman they, being stepped they on. Have a weird, <laughs> they have a weird uh, cool uh, poster scene, the, the Polish poster. Sometimes they are so different from like what the key art actually oh, is. And they're it's, amazing. It's crazy, right? I love Polish and Czech posters so yeah. much, but they're impossible to get your hands on an original one yeah. for like a normal amount of money. Fr- I've got Hungarian posters and... French posters and German posters and all this stuff, but I, uh, one day. But the the German poster for nine to five is, it's the standard image of the three of them around the table together, mm-hmm. um, except they're fantasizing about a dead body. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's gorgeous and it's really funny and I specifically chose this poster because it looks more like something I would have done. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it does. Uh, because as much as that movie's famous for like you know, for being female empowerment and being very funny. And then, you know, the plot of them, like kidnapping Dabney mm-hmm. Coleman, there's a long set piece in the middle of it where Lily Tomlin steals a body from the morgue and that they have to hide, mm-hmm. which I had no clue about at all. <laughs> I, I was like, when are they going to tie him up? I thought that was this movie. <laughs> um, they're spending like a half an hour with this dead body that they think is Dabney Coleman. And it's so goddamn funny. Mm-hmm. Uh I love Lily Tomlin so much. I that movie just had me gritting ear to ear. It's weird, it's zany, and it's really funny. And I'm shocked it took me this long to see it. <laughs> um, yeah, but well, holy shit! It's good. a good thing that you find a like a gem like that. Um, yeah, in 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 these days, I'd say. Yeah, I going back to older movies like that mm-hmm. is literally what i live for it's also why i'm so behind on catching up on new releases yeah I, i know the feeling it's like sometimes like for for work i have to do like not for work but since i'm not really getting paid for it but um for kind of work ish i have to do it and uh or i want to do it to like provide like the newest reviews and like grow the site and whatsoever um but I took the time yesterday uh, and I be- like I had to watch Jaws again because of the anniversary of course and that yeah. was uh, that was really the one thing I, I, I had to rewatch Jaws again because like I, it was been it's been a while that I actually watched the movie I think it's like 12 years now that I watched it so it's like and it still makes difference I think I was in my uh, yeah. early 20s and uh, since I'm I've grown and learned a lot more since then uh, I uh, there's still new things that I discovered in the movie and I really enjoyed that Jaws is the kind of movie that I haven't seen since I was a little kid mm-hmm. when I first saw it and I don't want to see it again because <laughs> when I was a kid it just like yeah, yeah, yeah. it scared the shit out of me and from my like child brain it was like five hours long it was like really long <laughs> and you thought it was over and then they go out on the boat and it was just like I freaked out when I was a kid <laughs> and I saw that movie and then I saw all the sequels and was very disappointed yeah 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 uh, My, like, child memory of Jaws and Jaws 2 is that Jaws is five hours long mm-hmm. and Jaws 2 is, like, half an hour long. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Which, you know what? That's fine. I've probably seen Jaws 4, The Revenge, more okay. than any of the other wow. ones. Not wow. Not by choice. Not by choice. Just How come does that come up? Not by choice. I don't like that movie. <laughs> yeah. I hate that I movie. was wondering. <laughs> But I feel like it's always on TV or, like, someone's always watching it when I come in the room. <laughs> And I end up watching Michael Caine and a sentient shark. Yeah, that uh, sounds very, very weird when you come in a room and people are watching that movie. It's, it's, it must be a thing then, I guess. I guess. I don't know. Or maybe my dad will just watch whatever's on TV whenever <laughs> I'm done. Okay. I don't know. And uh, yeah, you gave me another one, uh, which is Suddenly Last. 
Yeah, suddenly last summer, I'd never seen this either. And this was also a film that like everyone has mentioned for like mm-hmm. years and years and years and years and years. This is a really big deal. Yeah. It's Tennessee Williams. Mm-hmm. It's Catherine Hepburn. It's Elizabeth um, Taylor. It's Montgomery Clift. And I was like, yeah, I'll get to it eventually. <laughs> um, and so it's quarantine. I've got nothing better to do but finally check off some of these like classic movie boxes and Oh my God, this movie's outstanding. Mm-hmm. It opens on like a very long, very painful lobotomy sequence. And this mm-hmm. is a movie from like the like late 50s. Yeah. It is shocking the stuff this goes into. And it's a movie about uh, a woman who's traumatized by witnessing something mm-hmm. uh, and the death of her cousin. And her aunt is trying to get her lobotomized so that she can't remember whatever the secret is that led to her cousin's yeah. death. And it is very good. And it's beautifully done. And the twist and the reveal, I guess, at the end is very fucked up. Okay. that's. that's I mean, it's good. Th- it's a great movie. And I could not recommend it highly enough, which, again, like every film critic in the world has already done before me so yeah i mean it's very good i mean uh, i i you are know, always try to catch up on movies i have not seen and i haven't seen suddenly last summer so that's a good recommend on, on on your side thank you for that it's a great movie okay and uh, what is a must-see movie that will come out soon for you don't, please don't say tenet or dune ha well i am not very into the sci-fi crowd so i would not say other those Perfect. two however the movie that I've been like looking forward to all year long mm-hmm. and just got pushed to next year, which yeah, I'm like I'm sorry. ripping my hands on my chair in frustration over is Edgar Wright's Last Night in Soho. Yeah. I cannot wait. Yeah, the prospect I'm forward of Edgar to. Wright returning to horror and doing straight horror and not like I love Shaun of the Dead, mm-hmm. but him doing a horror movie without comedy, I am thrilled because he has some of the best visual language and editing mm-hmm. and photography and shot structure around right now like yeah on par with like early dario argento mm-hmm. so to see him stepping into like that kind of polanski argento-esque narrative of like a woman alone in her apartment um is just so sinister and sounds so freaking fun and- i can't wait and it was supposed to come out in like september or august and then they push it until next year because I think they still need to do some pickup shots, which they can't get right now. Yeah, I, I uh, remember it because I think earlier, I think it was January, maybe last at the end of last year. I'm not sure The one of the Facebook uh, like uh, poster groups I'm in, um, uh, a good friend of mine, uh, Gareth Griffiths. He is like he lives in I think now he lives in London, but uh, they were like uh, filming around there, and he just basically walked into ba- almost into the shots, and they saw like, oh, that's Edgar Wright. What is he doing here? And then, like, uh, we, like in the group, we try to figure out what kind of movie it was, and then uh, we 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 found out that it was last night in Soho. So yeah, that was kind of cool to see. So he knows some some. Oh my God, more. that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that's a, that's that's a cool thing. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I cannot wait for that. Yeah, <laughs> Edgar Wright also has a documentary coming up. He does. Which this one? This year, next year. Uh, it's about the band Sparks. Okay. Which I'm a big, big, big fan oh, of Sparks. Right, They've been right. around. It's like the early '70s, mm-hmm. and they're still touring, and they're amazing. And he's just like been casually working on a documentary about Sparks, mm-hmm. like for the past like year or so. That was also supposed to come out this year, mm-hmm. which hopefully that'll happen there's a new sparks album out this year <laughs> tie-in maybe yeah if we're not getting soho maybe we can at least get sparks yeah. like i got i gotta have something yeah Alrighty. um the next question is what's your favorite movie my favorite movie uh is pedro almodovar's all about my mother from oh, 1999 yeah, that's a great one great it choice it's outstanding I- and it- tears me up inside but it's also so beautiful and so funny and so well made and it's i love el motivar so much he's my favorite director um and this is just far and away his best movie i love it so much is 
uh, you gave me also some uh, poster art for that. Is it is it the regular poster or which one is it? No, oh, I, th I, I think I found the regular one. Okay. I, yeah, the original mm -hmm. one is uh, this one. just the woman's face and it's the Todo Sobre Mi Madre yeah. uh, titling. And I love that poster. I used to have that poster. But what happened? Framed. A uh, Framed. Okay, um, okay. I had it framed, and it was an original. It was gorgeous. I kept it uh, behind my desk mm -hmm. at my office um, at my last job. Um, and then I moved into my new condo a year or so ago, mm -hmm. two years ago. Um, and then I left for a weekend, and I came back, and it had fallen off of the wall. No. And the frame fell against the opposite wall and shattered. No, and it cut cut the poster. And then when it shattered, it tore it into the poster. Oh my god, I'm sorry. And so I came back home and I was like, well Oh my god, this is this I is put that in the trash. This hurts. This hurts just hearing about it. You know what what happened to me was uh um it wasn't that bad, but I have a Roomba. I had a frame, it was sitting on the floor, I forgot to pick it up. And Roomba Roomba was Roombaing, and uh, it uh, and it was like a cheap IKEA IKEA frame, and the the the, the, the acrylic uh, glass basically it, like ripped it kind of open, and so it, the 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 Roomba got on the print, and I was like, oh my god, no! I was when I saw it, like when I came home, and the Roomba was like sitting there, and the like the the like the frame falling on top, and I was like, oh no, I know, I was like basically praying, please. <laughs> And uh, yeah, it was just a couple scratches. It was still sad though, but um, wasn't yeah. wasn't too bad. It wasn't like totally destroyed. I've unfortunately lost two posters to this. What to? I hate that it happened a second to, time. What the falling down? What what other poster? The, the exact same way. Oh my god! Um, and the the other one was Bergman's Fanny and Alexander. I had the mm -hmm. original US one sheet. I found it at like a charity shop yeah. out here. Um that was already framed. The problem is these frames were heavy yeah. as all hell, mm -hmm. um, made of glass and they were just entirely too much for my wall. Yeah. So I use a lot lighter woods and frames now. Yeah. Um, and knock on wood, <laughs> nothing else has happened. Yeah. I help thankfully, you. Thankfully. Yeah. Thankfully all of my very rare posters are safe at the moment. Mm. I can get another all about my mother poster. I will get another yeah, you one will. eventually. There was, but I have a lot of Elmodovar posters. I think in in December last year there was an Elmodovar, or it wasn't January, January or December. There was an Elmodovar screening. He had two one, and he was at, uh, also there with uh, with his new one, Pain and Glory. And I think all about oh, my I mother was in there. Pain and Glory. Yeah, yeah. They showed both. I think I in attendance of him. And we just. Oh, I I would kill to meet him. I would kill to meet that man. You, you could have. I don't know I, when it was. I think it was December. End of December. They had like uh, in Hollywood a screening somewhere. Oh really? Yeah. I damn. I should have gone. I didn't. I did not know that was even going on. And I live here. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> Someone they did they had. Me. I think around the Golden Globes they had some some of those kind of like directors. For your consideration. Yeah, something like that. Something like that yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know that Antonio Banderas was in town to do stuff for Pain and Glory, yeah. and I that sold out immediately. It must have been that. Yeah, maybe. Then. Damn it. Oh well. Oh well. Um, but yeah, I've got a lot of <laughs> mo of our pieces around my apartment because yeah. I'm a big, big, big fan. Um, and All About My Mother just got released on Blu-ray here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. back in January by the Criterion Collection. That artwork is amazing. It's so good, mm -hmm. and I need to get that. <laughs> um, so. How do you like? I've been trying to not spend my money, but <laughs> okay. Sh shout out Criterion Collection, please hear us. <laughs> um, how how do you like the original poster in in terms of poster making and po being a poster artist? I love the original poster. It's gorgeous. El Motivar's posters are famously very good. He has a very 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 strong sense of design and. The color palettes of his films themselves are yeah. incredibly iconic yeah. and strong and recognizable, and that very, very bright primary color like blocking. And, that he yeah, does. And, and the mother in every movie. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's like it, his movies are outstanding, and so his posters equally are. And he's—I know he's very involved with his posters. Mm 
Um, I have his the Tashin book yeah. on on his archives, and he goes in depth into a lot of the different poster cool. designs. Yeah. But the one the original poster for uh-huh. album of my mother is fantastic. Yeah, it's gorgeous. It's a very simple illustration. Yeah, yeah. Of the lead actress. Um, and again, it's that like almost Warholian simple like mm-hmm. three color blocking that really is a strong field of yellow and then the blue bumping in there. I mean, it's the exact same color palette you're going to find on his like 1986 poster for Matador. Mm-hmm. Like it's all the same stuff done there that he's been doing his entire career. Mm-hmm. And it just like as soon as you see that, you know, it's not mode of our film, even though it says it gigantic down there at the bottom. Mm-hmm. It's beautiful. I love that nice, simple stack title treatment on the left. I, it's it does so much with so little, and it doesn't. Mm. Here's the thing: it doesn't tell you anything about them, what the movie is about. Yeah. Other than it does not. Yeah. It's all about. It. Yeah, and it's a movie that. If, you don't know what's gonna happen in it, it's not like it's a mystery film or mm-hmm. a suspense film, but if you, it's it's more of a melodrama or like a family drama. Um, but if you don't know what's gonna happen in the movie you'll be so much more invested in it mm. because it takes wide swings um, <laughs> and you will just go along with them. Yeah. The description for it on IMDb before I saw it was uh, a, like a teenage boy who wants to be a writer uh, is trying to get reconnected with his birth father that he's never met, which I was like, oh, okay, cool. That's the first five minutes of the film. Yeah, and uh, and then it takes a gigantic yeah. change from there. Just like act, act one stuff, and then it changes so yeah. fast. <laughs> act point oh. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Basically, that we we're not yeah. we're not done with that one yet. <laughs> it is. Oh my god, it's an amazing, amazing movie, and all I can say is go in blind and just kind of let it wash over you. Yeah. The soundtrack is amazing. I yeah, I showed it to my partner. Mm-hmm. Uh, over the holidays um <laughs> just was left like a blubbering mess yeah. it's very good it is very very good i again i i've never seen a bad El of our film mm-hmm. and i've seen every single El of our film so uh i don't know you, you didn't do the criterion collection did you the the cover i did not but I how do you like it how do you like that in terms of comparison oh, I, of the original key art i love it because it brings the exact same flavor um, into there, they have been using some amazing artists to do their El Motivo releases. They've done Women on the Verge of Nervous Breakdown mm-hmm. uh, and Atame, which I'm over the moon about, and I just hope that we can get more soon. Um, but it's a beautiful, beautiful cover, and it pulls on the most iconic image from the movie mm-hmm. of um, uh, it's not Sylvia, it's what is that actress's name? Anyway, uh, Cecilia Roth, that's yeah. who it is. It's Cecilia Ross standing in front of uh, the entrance to the theater with a gigantic, um, very like half-toned poster of mm. the other lead actress in front of it. So you've got that gigantic mouth yeah. next to her, and it takes what is kind of an ordinary scene and it blows it out into this very kind of surreal landscape. Yeah, and also this... And it's almost like Dali-esque. Yeah, and, all... and then the new, like, the new title treatment yeah. that they did for it, that kind of, like, handcrafted blue is gorgeous. I love it. I also like the, the silhouette. Of, I think it's the boy. It's supposed to be the boy, right? On the, on the right side there. So that's, like, that's also really cool to, to put that in and have all those kind of this aspects... Of uh, um, of the story in there and uh, or the, the the kind of way the different perspectives that that come in from the movie so that's kind of cool to see. And the illustration style is very smooth and very fluid mm-hmm. in a way that just fits El Motorhar's visual language perfectly. Mm-hmm. I I love what they did and I cannot wait to see uh, them handle a couple more of his movies. Mm-hmm. Did did you do also do a, a version for that, a poster version for that movie? I did. I did a poster when I was doing my poster a day project okay. uh, in 2018 because it's my favorite movie. Mm-hmm. And when I got around to my birthday uh, doing the poster a day, mm-hmm. I was like, well, I better do all about my mother. And I was like all week. I was like, on my birthday, I'm going to do all about my mother. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. I should think of an idea and then I should do it. And then I got to my birthday and I had no idea what to do. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's a spattering of images. I wanted to avoid 
the iconic image of her out in front of the theater that Criterion used Mm -hmm. um, because I knew that like someone would be able to do it better than me. Mm -hmm. And hey, look, they did. (laughs) Uh, And so instead I used uh, Cecilia Roth from a little bit after Mm -hmm. that sequence when she's standing in the rain with her umbrella because that's a very important scene that kind of goes for the throat. Um, And then I just wanted to include kind of more uh, like a mix of very graphic kind of cut up collage elements with kind of handwritten and like scratchy Mm. um, handmade elements. Um, Because as much as that movie is very old Hollywood style and very constructed and very like deliberately built, it's got a very personal and emotional core at the center of it that is very chaotic and unwieldy Mm. and kind of keeps trying to break outside of his very carefully constructed frame and it's a beautiful beautiful movie because of that and I so I did my best to capture that but I as much as I love 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 El Motivar's films I'm probably not the artist to do his stuff <laughs> but maybe who knows fine. who knows maybe it happens who knows in the future at least at least for Criterion I mean you've been in uh I would love you to do a lot of stuff for them so far so uh why not yeah fingers crossed yeah um okay the next topic i want to talk about is since we already speak of posters here um what are your three posters or pieces of art that uh you really dig right now my three favorite posters of all time i'm so fortunate enough to own prints of them original okay, okay. that's cool uh, theatrical prints of them which good god uh my first my number one is uh, Rene Ferracci's poster for Louis Benoit's The Phantom of Liberty, mm-hmm. um, which uh, it's a French poster for a French film by a Spanish filmmaker. <laughs> uh, however, the version of the poster that I own is the German poster. Of course. <laughs> of course, because German posters are easier to get a hold of and easier to frame. <laughs> but also because the original French poster has a white background mm-hmm. Um, but the German one has like a silver background, okay. just slightly reflective and it's gorgeous. It's just that one step a little bit better, but I came across this very young because I would go through my library when they had a nice like selection of like videotapes and DVDs and they had a tape of Phantom of Liberty with this, it's a butt, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a butt with legs as the Statue of Liberty with, like, a wilting torch. And it's a very uh, eye-catching image. (laughs) It definitely Um, is. (laughs) You will not forget it. It, It's like a sister design to Farachi's poster for Bunuel's The Discreet Term of the Bourgeoisie, Mm -hmm. um, which was an Oscar winner and a really, really big deal of a film. And that's a pair of lips with a top hat and then like chicken legs, Mm. no, a woman's legs. And then Phantom of Liberty is like ostrich legs. Um, And so they are like twin designs, but it was the, but it was the poster for Phantom of Liberty that I saw on a tape and then on a DVD Mm -hmm. as at my library as a kid that I was like, I need to know what that is. (laughs) I need to know what this movie is. Because I need to know why this art is here. I need to know why someone made this. I'm, I'm really. And I need to know why this is being shown to I'm, me. And so it was one of the first foreign language films I saw because of that. And I was like, I I have to watch this movie. And it's has no plot. Yeah. It's been described as like an art house Mr. Show episode. <laughs> it's it's just scene after scene blending into the next because you'll get a bit of a story and a narrative. And just as it's about to wrap up, a side character will come in and then the movie will just follow them out into their own little story. And then that will just keep going on and going on and going on and going on until it's like wraps itself up. And it's beautiful and it's hysterical and it's weird and it's strange. And it's one of the best movies I've ever seen. And it totally changed my life. And it's the poster that I want to do stuff like that. I want to do stuff like that. I've got... Um, an art book of Rene Faraci's designs that I had imported from France. Um, and it has all of his work in it, just like 
page by page. Here's the next poster. Here's the next poster. But the end is like a big long process write up on the design for the Phantom of Liberty. It's the only one that gets that treatment in the book. Mm -hmm. Um, and it goes through all of his rejected comps and unused pieces for it before he finally ended up on that. And it's beautiful to read through, um, and to feel like, oh, okay, I'm not alone. I have the exact same insecurities and thoughts going into this that my favorite designer had going into making my favorite poster. Mm. Uh, and I love it so much, and I'm so pleased that I can wake up every morning and see it uh, in my house. I, I really love that you're so enthused about uh, also about this, like posters, even when you were younger and uh, like had to check out movies that uh, the normal person probably wouldn't think of in a lifetime and uh, i really enjoyed it and i think it reflects in your art as well because you make those kind of uh, different posters as i as i mentioned or did because you come from a different perspective and i think that is really interesting and in that uh, gives or th this is one of the reasons why for example why i collect because i like the difference uh, in those posters and that, uh, i mean the poster is like the first thing you see uh, before you get yeah, to know exactly. a movie and this is um what what turns you on or off of, of a movie so that's kind of cool um that you share that yeah sound. and i want to make something as weird and eye-catching as that and i don't think i've i have yet to do something as strange as that mm. but i i i have high hopes for the future <laughs> okay uh what's number two number two is another l mode of our film it's dark habits from 85 84 yeah somewhere around um there. Uh, and the poster is designed by Ivan Zulueta, mm -hmm. um, who is also an amazing filmmaker in his own right. But he designed a lot of the posters for Pedro Almodovar's early films and some of Louis Buñuel's um, Spanish films like Vidiana mm -hmm. uh, and Simon of the Desert. And Zulueta's style is bonkers. It's a mix of like 1970s punk cut up collage blended with like late 60s hippie <laughs> illustration and somewhere in between all of that he and Almodovar hooked up and they made some of the weirdest best poster arts <laughs> of all time and this is for dark habits which is like the Almodovar version of um uh sister act yeah which i they tried to get him to make an english language version of this movie and he didn't want to do it. And then they oh, made Sister yeah, Act. And I'm better suspicious that. that maybe they're a little similar. Um, but the poster for this is literally a nun, a nun's habit draped over a growling tiger um, surrounded by music notes. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's a microphone cord wrapping around to a woman singing at the bottom. And then the opposite side, there's a sacred heart mm -hmm. emblem. Uh, stabbed full of heroin needles. <laughs> yeah, that uh, goes along the lines of Christiana F. I'd say. <laughs> so you know, normal. <laughs> Your average everyday movie poster. Exactly. Um, and this is I have this one behind me yeah. here in my kitchen. Oh, that. Oh, yeah. Um, that's that's right. There, there it is. Hmm. And it's purple and orange, which are two colors that you're not gonna commonly find yeah. on a movie poster, especially like a primary theatrical release poster. Yeah. Um, and it's one of the most gorgeous and jarring images you're ever going to see. And everyone who walks into my house says, what's with a tiger nun poster? <laughs> I always have a story and I can always talk them into watching this movie. And is it, uh, that's uh, that's uh, the basis for your logo, right? Partially. Yeah. I, uh, partially, I just kind of have a thing for nuns. <laughs> <laughs> I also have a couple nun paintings around my yeah. house. Um, that I just have found. But don't, but know, don't tell me you like the nun, uh, the horror movie. I never saw it. Okay, good. Because <laughs> I have no interest. Okay. <laughs> um, like I love, I love Ken Russell's The Devils, and I love like you know nun exploitation stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but like when I was naming my design brand, I named it after the Hammer horror movie Doctor Jekyll and Sister Hyde mm -hmm. because it's a trans horror movie. And I'm a trans person who makes horror art, yeah. and I thought it was appropriate. And the movie, that movie is very important to me. Um, and then I was like, okay, I'll think of an emblem, something to do. Um, and like the concept of a vampire nun has always been very funny mm -hmm. and very interesting to me. Um, and I was like, the play on words of sister to me and sister Hyde 
uh, and also like the nun connotation mm-hmm. of it was very funny. And so if I lean into that and again, the like, I, my favorite thing to do is to kind of juxtapose very classic, clean presentations of things with something a little bit more gritty, something a little more weird. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so to do, you know, a nun with bleeding fangs and like a very like Xeroxed messy <laughs> black and white image, yeah. you know, I was able to make it kind of simple and clean that people could notice it. And also like, I think it's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so too. I really that's enjoyed just, the logo. That's just me. Yeah. And you also brought a third one, which is, which one is that? This is the telephone book, which um, I don't know the designer behind this poster, but the movie is a kind of rare 1970s sex comedy gem. It's mm-hmm. one of Steve Martin's favorite movies um, <laughs> in which a woman falls in love with the world's greatest obscene telephone caller. And the poster is incredibly simple. It's a field of like light blue, which is gorgeous. I love blue. Um, the title treatment is at the bottom on one line, just as the telephone book in white. The tagline, which is the summary of the movie, which is one woman falls in love with the world's greatest obscene phone caller, runs down the center into the title treatment. And then, you know, you have one of the most iconic images in the world on top of that, which is a white telephone with the old tangled phone wire Mm. caught up to the left and right of it so that it looks like uh, genitalia. Mm -hmm. And it is so funny and so brilliant of a design. <laughs> and it is it is wonderfully iconic. And, you know, they reused it for the Blu-ray cover because it's just that good. Of course, good. yeah. <laughs> uh, it is one of the funniest and most, like, ingenious designs I've ever seen. And it goes in line with my other one being a butt. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry, it's a little like middle schooler, but it's funny and it's smart and like, it <laughs> sells the movie. You see that and you kind of laugh and then you kind of like, all right, fuck it, let's see that. Mm. <laughs> and the movie lives up to that. The movie's outrageously funny mm. and outrageously weird. Um, I lent my Blu-ray copy to Scott Saslow to see and <laughs> okay. he was like, why'd you make me watch that? <laughs> why'd you make me do that? <laughs> very good okay i highly recommend it. okay okay um, i will check it out as well <laughs> yeah um don't, don't warn you. so you already said that you um like collect a lot of a lot of vintage posters as you can see in the background as well um what is your opinion on like the modern galleries that come up with the screen prints for example like bottleneck mondo 1988 and stuff like that i love bottleneck and mondo and black dragon press i love that stuff so much i wish they weren't as limited as they were because i want to get some Mm -hmm. (laughs) because every single time uh a new one comes out like adam made a stalker poster or some of phantom city creatives stuff they've been doing with mondo Mm -hmm. recently i'm always like oh hey i want that cool i'll have the 50 dollars or whatever astronomical price it is i'll have that soon i'm just gonna like my paycheck comes in like a week or two and then I'll go, oh, it's sold mm-hmm. out already? Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, you have to know in All advance. Right. That's like... <laughs> I I have to constantly have a couple hundred bucks sitting around just to, just to be able to wait around for posters because they always crop up. And yeah, like, don't, don't tend... Phantom City did a great like Harley Quinn yeah. poster for Bondo recently mm-hmm. for an episode of the Batman yeah. animated series. I wanted it so that's bad, that, and it sold out within like half an yeah, hour. And I was like, "Well, it's gonna be under release, oh, well. on the release podcast for an at, like the week after yours is gonna come out." So yeah, I'm gonna talk about that. <laughs> so, God, I love that. Yeah, their stuff is so good. Yeah, and it's like I don't know, Leah. You don't have to tell me. I, I, I don't. I don't actually want to tell it on on the podcast, but I just bought four Star Wars Matt Ferguson posters. Four, all four. Oh, they're so good. All yeah, four. As soon as you drop those, I was like. <sighs> Yeah. yeah, that Empire one especially is just like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I got like I, I that, that's what I'm saying. I got I got the English variant. I got the Japanese variant. I got the regular uh, English variant, and I got the regular Japanese variant. I I I I have mm. so much respect for that. I one of my best friends uh, collects vintage posters like I mm-hmm. do, um, and he's on 
auction sites and like private yeah specifically like poster vintage auction yeah. sites like day in day out and i get texts from him like once a week being like here's what's up for auction this week you know? <laughs> and like like please please my walls only have so much space i exactly. only have so much money exactly. i need to stop doing this and like he has like every poster in the world like he focuses a lot on like vintage international posters mm. and like you know, every couple of months he'll be like, this is my dream poster. I have to get it. And then like two weeks later, it's like, well, I got it. <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> you can't do that. And then he just like, his apartment is just full of like a flat files. Oh yeah. With all of these like stored away. Yeah. yeah it's and like the few that he can hang on the wall. The walls are just like covered. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I so know the feeling and it's like, um, it's like tough. I mean, you see with the wall space, there's just limited wall space. And I, I'm so happy about like the smaller ones, like the Ollie Moss ones here, for example, or yeah. the Baby Yoda by Ruiz Burgos. I'm, I'm so happy about those ones because I can put up more. Can up. Yeah, I can, I can put up some more. <laughs> but like the, the, like the Black Panther one or the Pulp Fiction, which is 24 by 36. I mean, come on, you, this, you can only put up so much. It's like... Well, the, the hardest part for me is that a lot of the ones that I want to get... Mm -hmm are vintage french posters mm -hmm. and those are french grands and they are like six feet oh, five feet tall. oh those ones you want to get they're huge and i've got a bunch of them and i have nowhere to put them <laughs> i literally i have a french grand of almodovar's talk to her mm -hmm. and it's so big and i have nowhere to put it so i put it in the back of my closet mm-hmm so when I move my clothes, I can see it behind there. Maybe just put it on like on on the doors. Do, does it fit on the door? No. No. Because it's, it's too huge. It's, it's, it's too wide. It's really wide. Yeah, okay. It's really okay. wide too. I've got an original of Rene Van Fassbender's Martha mm -hmm. as a French grand. I've got an original of John Waters' Polyester. Mm -hmm. Um and i just i have nowhere to put these fuckers oh man <laughs> they're beautiful and they're from the 70s mm. and the 80s so they're printed on like rice paper they're yeah like okay crazy thin, that's cool like fragile and i need to get glass frames for them i also have an original italian yeah. uh fogli poster which is about the same size for the james coburn spy movie in like flint mm -hmm. which i love that movie, and it's a beautiful like oh multicolor like, this is like i don't know poster. How, how much does a frame cost like that this like i don't know nobody can pay for that well i bought the poster for like 20 bucks yeah i know but the frame is probably like that's gonna be like over a thousand dollars exactly <laughs> this is like and then you need there's a frame shop near me and the the guy who runs it was like yeah well you know i'm producing a movie soon and i was like i'll do a poster for you for free if you give me a frame <laughs> very good and did he say yes yeah, but you know the movie just has to be made. Oh, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Very good. Um, so um, yeah, you collect as well. We figured that out. But do you have do we have uh, screen prints as well? I don't. I have a few of mine that have been done for me by different like uh, distributors and stuff that you know they'll send me a copy. Mm. Um, but I have very few uh, like you know, contemporary yeah. screen print ones just because like I don't have a lot of space for money. Mm. And is it, I wish I did so many that, like I said, I really, really, really want to get a lot of like, especially Phantom City stuff. Yeah. But like it just, every single time that I find one that like, that's perfect and good and right. And it fits everything. It's sold out. So I'm like, well, yeah, I'll wait. Yeah. That's like, I'm hoping that Adam Ada can do more because I love his stuff. This... And like his stalker prints were so good that I'm not even a big Tarkovsky fan. Yeah. And I wanted the one. <laughs> There's like, uh, I mean, you can, you can, like, the good thing is, like, those those Facebook groups. I mean, sometimes they have, like, especially, especially Bottleneck, they do, like, pre-sales sometimes. And it's, like, really nice of them. And you have a good chance of getting a poster. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So, next up, what, I mean, what is the last piece of art you put up then? The last piece of art that I posted and put out was uh, oh on the wall yeah 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 <laughs> um, was well different things um was i actually got an original hungarian print for dr jekyll and sister hyde oh um, perfect and you which is beautiful mm -hmm. uh, and i was like you know what i'd gotten paid for a job recently mm -hmm. and i was like you know what treat yourself I treat yourself should work uh yeah i'm gonna treat myself and i'm gonna like 
make my workspace a little bit nicer. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, I should get a Sister Hyde poster because I'm designing under Sister Hyde. Of course. I should I should do the thing. Um, and it's gorgeous and it's black, white, and red. Mm -hmm. So it fits in with my aesthetic to a T. Mm -hmm. um, and it's nice, small. It's, oh, it's really small, so it fits in the wall perfectly. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to show it like the, the desk image you, you gave me but before, but yeah. before we talk about the other one. <laughs> That's what I'm staring at right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, and then next to it, uh, I have a print that I did for a theatrical series oh, cool. here in LA, mm -hmm. um, of sixties and seventies, uh, Italian giallo, uh, uh, Italian giallo films, which is like my favorite horror subject <laughs> in the world. Okay, cool. Give me a black glove killer, some insane synth score, uh, and bright lighting mm -hmm. and I am in. What? Um, and. So I did that with the Secret Movie Club here for okay. Jello Gelato. What kind of print is it? Uh, and they sent me a print. What what kind of print is it? Um, uh, I honestly have no clue. <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> they did the printing, but is it? And then they sent one to me. But is, is it a screen print or is it a G Clay? It's a G Clay. I think. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, they don't do screen printing. I wish they did screen printing. It would be cool. I mean, you could definitely um, do it. I think with this one. Oh yeah, yeah. That's that's the thing about my stuff is that it's it's a limited color palette, so it's easy from it's <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. The I separation. I want to get into screen printing. It's been my it's been my like quarantine plan to mm. like, you know, yeah. get a couple slaps of wood and some <laughs> ah okay 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 uh, and some screen printing paper together to do a couple pieces, but I keep forgetting. <laughs> I keep writing that time because there's another project and then there's another job yeah. and then I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully, you know. Maybe going into July or August, things will slow down, uh -huh. and I can finally start doing some screen printing, because I really want to screen print my cruising poster. But we'll see. Yeah. Um. I I pulled up your desk. Um. Could you walk us through, like, what is how is your working routine when, like, basically when you come to the desk or what do you do at your desk and stuff like that? Well, I uh, should have a more regimented setup than I do. My desk is literally in the back corner of my living room mm -hmm. so it's right next to my couch and my tv mm -hmm. <laughs> which isn't good um but i literally have an inlet in the back of my uh living room that's the exact size yeah. as my desk so but i desk you, you know right there I, I know the feeling since the couch is over here yeah i know you're right here <laughs> yep uh, and so i it lets me like turn away from the world and I've got this nice little alcove to myself over here and it's a small desk and you know, I wish I had more room and I wish I had a second monitor and all this stuff, but I've got my essentials. I've got all my notebooks. I've got, uh, my computer's a little elevated. So I've got my eight terabyte hard drive mm -hmm. hooked into that. Uh, and then I've got a backup behind it. Um, and then I keep little like flashcards yeah. to like make small notes on uh here and there as i'm going um and then i've got my little lamp and then that's about it and then i've got my two posters above just so i have something to look at when i'm frustrated and frustrated an idea <laughs> and then i have a little bit of space behind my keyboard open so i can prop up my ipad there put on a movie or two or a show while i'm working mm. um or just like pipe in some like 80s punk <laughs> uh yeah, yeah. in like new wave music and just focus in that way but usually like you know i've got a nice chair i can sit down as long as my podcast microphone's out of the way mm -hmm. and i keep uh a tablet here as well as a roll mouse mm -hmm. i don't like i don't like a normal mouse i use a trackball yeah. instead um just because it's so much better on my wrist and especially like in photoshop and illustrator it's a lot faster okay um, and I mean, that's about it. It's, it's simple. I wish I had like multiple tablets and screens to be going off okay, of, yeah. but I don't. Yeah. But I mean, well, it could be in the future. I, I have to say I, I yeah. use three and I actually need three. <laughs> I, sh I, sh oh, I, I shared one with you and this like, I have my script here and I have the OBS studio where I do the live editing here. Then I got the browser for like the, the, the stuff I'm going to pull in. I got the, I got the file explorer so I can pull the stuff into the browser. And then I got you on Skype on, on, on the left side here. And then I got the, some, uh, some browser open so I can, if we like don't know anything, 
anything like both of us don't know this thing we can look it up mm -hmm. so this, I, I need those three <laughs> when i when i uh was working my office job uh as an art director i had my computer and had a second monitor mm -hmm. for that computer which was huge and then i had my laptop and that had a second monitor to it and then i had a tv in the back of my room yeah. too so i could check all of our streaming platforms and stuff like that and it was just like the high tech of high tech <laughs> and i was like yeah I'm, I'm i've got everything i need and now i'm like condensed down to one uh, desk again uh, with one computer and i'm like i need more yeah but i need more space yeah yeah it will happen don't worry it will happen <laughs> it will but you know for doing what i do in my apartment mm -hmm. i get a lot done and i've always i've always kind of liked the like lean mean clean yeah uh approach to things which i think you know makes makes it a little bit better if i if i i don't even know what i would do with a whole big like cintiq and like big tablet and stuff like that mm -hmm. it's not really like i don't don't do big detailed illustrations and stuff like that that's not that's not my thing mm -hmm. um but it would be nice to have a flat file for stuff and yeah. it would be nice to have like a photo scanner for collages and stuff like that but maybe someday maybe someday um, so you, um, since we like saw your workplace and you gave us a little insight on how you work, is there something you're working on right now? And is there something you can talk about? I mean, because I know how it all is with like the NDAs and stuff like that. I am very busy at the moment, but I'm heavily contracted on just about everything that I'm working on. What I can say in vague terms <laughs> is that I'm working on a poster for a re-release of a very sought after European cult film from the 70s. Mm -hmm. That's gonna be a theatrical one sheet um, that I think a lot of people are gonna be really, really, really excited for that mm -hmm. film and for that to finally have a nice, beautiful new restoration. Is that what's gonna come out next week? Cause you mentioned something earlier. No, that's not gonna come out for a while. Okay. That's probably gonna be back in the fall. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I have a record that's coming out next week, mm -hmm. um, which is for a horror movie from a couple of years ago, 2015, mm -hmm. um, that's inspired by a lot of 1980s Italian splatter films. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be a big deal. And that's going to be really, really, really fun. And I think that's it, it's, dropping this week. Okay. Is that, is that the one you gave me or is it something else? No. Okay. Something else. Um, and then I'm also working on another record at the moment um, that's for an 80s Italian splatter film. <laughs> um, so that should hopefully be out next month, ideally. But I'm starting on that this week. And then everything else I'm working on is NDA'd to the point that I can't even mention that I'm working yep, on yep, it. Yep, yep, yep. That's uh, totally understandable. I, I know it. I know the feeling. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you gave me something that I could show for that. So or is, yeah. that, is, that, is that right? So you had... You had asked uh, when we were like prepping stuff, what was the hardest project? Oh, that's the hardest project. Okay, okay. Let's yeah. let's hear about that. So there's this. Um, last year, I was brought in to do designs for the sound, the vinyl release of William Friedkin Sorcerer, mm -hmm. um, which was being released by Waxwork. It's ended up being released uh, at the beginning of the year with. Uh, some new art by Tony Stella. Mm -hmm. uh, I was brought in. He's also German. Back in my... He is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and his paintings are fucking amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and I was brought in in August to do this. And they had initially said that they wanted something really like clean and graphic and punchy. Mm -hmm. And their releases for The Exorcist and Cruising before had kind of had that exact same yeah. aesthetic. And I love Cruising and I had that record. And so I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to do something like that. So the first one was very much in my wheelhouse, very much in my style. And it's the truck from the film, um, engulfed in flames mm. and then following up into, um, uh, oh God, the lead actor, Roy Scheider mm -hmm. from Jaws. Uh, Roy Scheider's eyes from the end of the film yeah. um, and they loved that and I loved it and I thought it was really really good and so we did a whole thing on it mm -hmm. um, and then William Friedkin came in and he was like I don't 
really like it. So how about we did this? And so he came with a whole like, like, very specific idea of what he wanted. He wanted it illustrated. He wanted it with bright, vivid colors. Mm-hmm. He wanted the four actors floating heads. Floating heads again. Up, up, which he literally said the phrase floating heads. And I was like, okay, cool. Grant Barrett. Uh, and then he wanted a very specific shot of the truck going across the bridge. Yeah. From, um, kind of a wide angle, um, which it isn't shown that way in the film. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I had to kind of, build it from scratch yeah. and because i don't do this kind of illustration i am much more kind of graphic and uh minimalist yeah. in that sense of the word i don't know i'm rooted more in that kind of like farachi collage punk mm-hmm. like yeah. you know kennedy's album cover stuff uh, i was like okay let's give it a shot um so it's painted head to toe, um, and I pulled in. I spent like two weeks straight okay, pulling crazy. all nighters doing this, yeah. which is time and effort I've never put into yeah. a project before. That I've just because I was like, I have to get this done right because this is literally for William Friedkin, and this is a big, 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 big deal. And it was my first record, and I was like, I want this to look amazing, and it's not my cup of tea, so I need to really work to make okay. this good. And how do you uh, how do you feel about it now? And how 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 did uh, uh, William Friedkin feel about it? He didn't like it. He did like it. <laughs> he did not. He did like not it. like it. Okay. Uh, he did not like it, and then Tony Stella was brought in. Ah, okay. Uh, to do something different. So that's how that one boiled out. But I'm proud of it. And I did a couple different color options, but I think this was the strongest of them. But I mean, I did a whole watercolor spread on it, and then I kind of used a little bit of my collage sensibilities in building the cliff sides mm-hmm. uh, and building out the uh, bridge mm-hmm. and truck. And then I fully painted the portraits of the five okay. uh, sorry, the four leads. Um, because I was like, well, if we're doing floating heads, I'm going to do at least a little something. Mm. So I pulled the best photos that I could of, uh, the four leads and I did individual portraits yeah. of all four of them, Crazy. brought them in. Um, and then I also used those four portraits as, uh, like the gatefold concept mm. for the interior. Um, and the whole thing is painted top to bottom, and it's the biggest file I've ever made. Mm. It's gigantic. The amount of <laughs> layers in there is nuts. Yeah, um, I, I saw by the way, like speaking of nuts, did, did you see the the Mexi Funk Jaws? Um, uh, like the, the 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 layers and like the the strokes he did basically. No, I did. No. Uh, yeah, check check it out. Mexi Funk has like there's like from his Jaws piece, and he has like a black and white version, and has like all the colored version where he like like put his vectors because he does like all the vector art this this is just insane this is just insane this is this looks crazy i don't I don't know how he does it this i don't know god damn it's a great poster yeah yeah but yeah this one is also i i think it, i think it looks really lovely i i really i really like the if it's like you're basically your first time doing this come on i mean it's not my first time i've I've done some stuff like that before but it was my first time like really like, yeah bringing that all together to do a single piece and as a commissioned piece exactly it was my first one that's what i mean painted yeah. um and you know i wasn't happy that i got killed yeah of course who not. Is, who is but you know i'm happy that uh, you know it got made and now it can be over in my graveyard on my site um mm. so okay Oh, well. Yeah. So um, how, how do you approach a, a project in, in general for that? And how much time do you plan in for a project? Well, the time is kind of always based on what the client brings to the table. Mm. So if it's something with, you know, a home video company, usually it can be like the criterion projects that I've done have been about like a two to three month turnaround, which is really nice and generous. And it's very like planned out of like, mm-hmm. by this day, we're going to do this. And by this day, we're going to do this. And by this day, we're going to do this. Um, meanwhile, with a one sheet that I'm going to do with like an agency, usually it's like, I've got a weekend mm-hmm. <laughs> and they want to see all of these comps. Or if it's um, 
some of the records I've been doing recently, it's like, you know, I get like two or three weeks and I get to do whatever the hell I want <laughs> and I submit it in and that's what I, we go with. Um, so it's always different, but I always make a point of like planning that out with my client beforehand. If they bring it to the table and say, we need it by this point, or if they say, you know, we need it eventually. I'm always like, okay, but when do you really need it? <laughs> so yeah. we can have a timeline on this so we can focus. But it's usually about like month and a half, two months um, on like a big major commission. Mm -hmm. um, and then typically what I'll do, uh, I mean, I've had the good fortune recently that the most, a lot of the stuff have been brought in on our films that I've seen before. So like The Elephant Man, mm -hmm. love that. Yeah, I've seen it to death and like same with Sorcerer. I've seen Sorcerer plenty of times. Um, so, but normally though, uh, if I haven't seen it or it's been a long time since I've seen it, I'll give it a rewatch. Mm -hmm. So um, start with that. I didn't rewatch Elephant Man before I did that piece because I've seen that movie to death um, and I was going to cry if I did. Um, but I'll go watch the movie or rewatch the movie if need be. Um, and then I'll typically take notes during the watch, uh, maybe sketch out little ideas in my notebook. Um, and then the next step is I go over to Pinterest and I build a mood board, mm -hmm. um, which is kind of exclusively for me. Maybe if, if the client asks, I'll share it with them so that we can kind of be on the same visual language, like from the jump. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's mostly for me so I can like gather up all the reference material of like, here's all the type ideas I'm thinking about. Here's all the kind of like aesthetic styles I'm thinking about. And here's all the color I'm thinking about. Or if it's like, let's say it's an Italian movie from the eighties and it's a horror movie. I'm going to grab every Italian eighties, like, um, uh, uh, poster from that era. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to think of the artist. Scotchi, I think, is the is the painter who did all this like airbrush, yeah. like City of Living Dead posters and stuff like that. I'm gonna pull in all of those so I kind of get that palette and get that kind of mood. And so I've got. I typically don't stop until I have a board of like two hundred pieces, thereabouts, mm -hmm. and then toss that up on my iPad over to the left of me so I can like constantly scroll through it and focus on things and also kind of unfocus on things and just kind of let the whole like grid of all of it congeal together into like a single color palette and then like a couple little ideas so that I can like keep ideas running yeah. and coming up while I'm working on stuff. And then, you know, from there I'll take in whatever assets I'm provided with. If it's a studio license, there will be, you know, typically, a wide yeah. variety of on-set photos, screenshots, and stuff like that. If I have to take screenshots, I do. Um, a lot of the times, you know, keeping a timestamp so that I can request higher-res versions mm -hmm. um, from the client. Um, going through all that organizing, pulling out the best photos that I want. I have color tags that I mm -hmm. use um, because it's just easier and cleaner for me that way. Sometimes I... I used to do a thing where I would rename all my file types, but that's A, too much work, and B, can make confusion if the client's like, oh, can you pull up uh, TIFF 0892? <laughs> and I'm like, wait a minute, do you mean this one? So yeah. it's easier for me to just do color coordinating. Um, so like, I'll flag it green if I know I really, really want to use it. Flag it yellow if I think it could be used, torn apart in the background somewhere. Tag it red if it could be, you know. Mm -hmm. So I can easily, quickly, like, scroll through all my assets and be like, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, toss them in Photoshop. Um, and then usually my first, like, day or two are kind of, like, sandbox time of, like, got all my assets, I'm going to play a little bit. So I just make, like, really fast, really quick turnarounds on just ideas based on my sketches and based on my Pinterest board. And then what I do is I then airdrop them over to my phone. Mm-hmm. And then I go make lunch, go make dinner, <laughs> whatever I do. I, you know, step away from it. Uh, and then, you know, I go and I sit through my phone. And I scroll through them there. So I work with them on, like, you know, the bigger environment of my computer. And I get, like, 
zeroed in and close and stuff like that. And I step away, I forget about it for a little bit, and I come at it with a new on a new surface in a new light and in a new headspace. And I can be like, oh, okay, that's a dumb idea. Or like, <laughs> oh, okay, that needs to be fixed to make this work. Or yeah. wow, I can't read that title at all. Let's find something cleaner. Um and then, you know, come back to the computer. And then maybe, you know, doing that has come up with a completely new idea. And I try to do somewhere between like Depending on the commission, six to twelve pieces mm-hmm. um, for a project. Yeah. Pack them all together, send them out to the client, and then from there it's back and forth of do we want to do more? I mean, that's that's a lot of work. I mean, coming with ups with so many different or kind of different ideas, and it's uh, yeah, it's uh, it, do other artists do that as well? Come up with so many different types right away. Yeah, I feel like especially within the like kind of more like one sheet and agency specific mm-hmm. background, you kind of have to. Mm-hmm. That's especially if I'm going to be working with an agency on something. They want to see nine to 15 pieces and they want to see them by Tuesday. Mm, okay, I see, I see. So it's like you got to you gotta know how to like whip those around really, really, really fast and then do cleans later. Mm. Which is fine. And I'm like super on board with that. Um, it's great when I'm working with someone like Criterion and they give you like three weeks, four weeks to do that first round. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, ooh, cool. You really like dig in and think about this yeah, cool. and like make these really clean before I send them out, which, you know, and then we make them even cleaner down the road. Mm-hmm. So like, you know. Having having time on your side and having a good art director on your side goes a long way, yeah. a very long way. Having a client that knows what they want, it's rare, but it's a blessing. <laughs> yeah, I bet, I bet. I mean, it, uh, otherwise it can be uh, or it can get very frustrating real quick. Yeah, I enjoy carte blanche, but I also enjoy. I kind of more enjoy like a specific brief. So. Yeah, I, I'm I'm kind of not not an artistic way, but on other stuff, I I don't like. Yeah, do whatever you want. That's that's yeah. Just tell me which direction should I go? Give me a, something to yep. go of. I mean, I, I like that as well. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. So now we know your process, and we already talked about a couple of things that might um, you might want to do in the future, but is there something uh, specifically you really want to work on? Is there something like an old franchise or an old movie you want to work on? Something new, maybe music or sports or some other genres you really like to explore? I would, honestly, I would love to do something for Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Oh, did you see the Sarah Deck one that came we- out the other day? Yeah, I did. I Sarah's done some. Mm -hmm. Mark did an amazing cover for Boom for the Love Bites, the second issue, Mm -hmm. um, that they that the Boom comics have been doing for the Buffy revival. I would love to do something for Buffy, especially for a comic. I think that would be so much fun. Someone needs to let me do. Someone needs to let me do Spike. <laughs> okay, people, you heard it here first. <laughs> let me do sexy, sexy James Marsters. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, any other genres you want to explore than film or TV? I would love to do album covers that aren't for film. I would love to do like I've I've done some stuff for music. I've done uh mm-hmm. like local bands, Chicago and stuff yeah. like that. But I would love to do more like I would love to do like album covers for like Anti Flag or like mm-hmm. you know, small punk bands. Yeah. I mean Anti Flag's not a small punk band. <laughs> yeah, I just like, would even I know that band. <laughs> I'm not into punk. Well they're big in Germany, I think fully. Yeah. Um pleases me to no end. But like yeah, I would love to do stuff like that mm-hmm. because I mean that's the stuff that I feel like I would do best at. Mm-hmm. I mean outside of film. Yeah. Uh but like I don't know, put me in, coach. Give me a shot. All right. Um, I would love to to, to see your uh, your take on maybe sports. I would like you interested to do like like a basketball or a baseball poster. I have no clue what to do. For that. I mean, like maybe it would have to be a sport that I like. So it would have to be like curling. Okay, cool. I, I'd take that. Or like hockey. I for some reason I only fuck with Canadian sports. <laughs> okay. 
or like but isn't uh, it like indiana like did didn't everybody play basketball in indiana isn't that a thing i i yeah, watched did, i watched Ho uh, who's years so i didn't do that <laughs> <laughs> okay but yeah okay i played hockey's fucking great yeah okay okay I'll, I'll do some hockey pieces and like i would gladly like you know i'm a big fan of uh i mean okay the la the la hockey team's fine mm -hmm. but like blackhawks are amazing but i love penguins by the way speaking of buffy and hockey um because i was um my first nhl game was la king's I don't know who they played, but they won pretty pretty big, and I had the chance to sit like really up front. And you know who was sitting in front of me? Angel. Yeah, Boreanis is a real big hockey. Yeah, yeah. he was. He was it. That was. Holy shit. That was. That was funny. <laughs> Fucking awesome. Oh my god, I would genuinely enjoy meeting him. Yeah, he is not my favorite character on that show yeah. by a long shot. However, uh, yeah, man. I love Angel. Angel is a messy show. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> I remember I was I was watching it in in German, of course, when I was like really young when it came out. Like back then, it was like yeah, good times. <laughs> I I rewatched it last year and I was like, wow, this is so much better than I forgot. And then it like yeah. <laughs> keeps going. I'm like, no, it's not. No, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. So then the next question is uh, one of my favorite questions because I really want to see what uh, what other like artists come up with. I mean, um, the question is, which classical artist or which kind of artist would you like to see make a film poster who is not really in the film poster world? I mean, we had answers like Cavaggio before and uh, who should do like a superhero movie and stuff like that. But I wonder what you come up with. Okay, so I, and this is this is me outing myself, uh, have never taken an art history course in my life because <laughs> I studied film. Mm -hmm, of course. Um, but I have a big, big, big appreciation for surrealism and Dadaism mm -hmm. and like very postmodern art stuff. So personally, I would love to see Barbara Kruger yeah. take on... Uh, take on some film posters because I fucking love her work so much. I mean, and of course, like her work has deeply, deeply inspired a lot of film poster designers mm -hmm. and a lot of like album cover designers. I mean, like just look at like the talking heads, true stories album cover. That's that's literally Barbara Kruger like, <laughs> being done by David Byrne. Yeah. Um, and every Supreme thing that came out. <laughs> yeah. Supreme. Like <laughs> her entire brand is what if we just stole from this? Lady? Yeah. Um, but I would love to see Barbara Kruger do one of two things. I would love to see her do a poster for, like, a really gross horror movie. Because mm -hmm. that is so not her thing. Or I would love to see her do something for, like, a Soderbergh movie. Like, an Ocean's 12 or, like, The Informant or, like, yeah, something a little weird and zany like that. But I would love to see something like that, but I would love to see Barbara Kruger try to do like a poster for like House of the Devil. Yeah, but but looking at like the the one you gave me with the the um, untitled, we have received orders not to move, um, which is show. It looks kind of horror movie ish. Yeah, no, she has a really great way of like capturing what's supposed to be normal everyday images and putting them in really jarring positions, mm -hmm. and then her use of you know that feature italicized font and black, white, and red on top of mm. that is just like, um, it's very, I don't know. It's very punk. It's very, it's very loud. It's very yeah anarchic. Um, and it's very, it's very pointed. There's not a single Barbara Kruger piece that isn't political. Mm. Um, so I would love to see, like, I don't know. Just the idea of like Barbara Kruger doing a Suspiria poster is yeah. like funny to me. <laughs> That's it. But also like, I, I would legit like, if I was an art director, I would legitimately bring her in to do like a Steven Soderbergh poster. Cause I mean like Neil Kellerhouse, who does the majority of his posters mm -hmm. clearly likes her stuff. Anyway, <laughs> let's get some nice, maybe um... she's too expensive. <laughs> who knows? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, maybe, I mean, well, why not? Maybe we see her doing a poster <laughs> at some point. Okay. Um, my next question or the almost last question is, like considered for all the other beginners. I mean, you are a self-made uh, 
person in the in the design world, I'd say. And um, I was wondering what could you, what kind of tips could you give uh, those the beginners in terms of hardware, maybe software, utensils, social media strategies, or something like that. Yeah, all I can say is that the great thing about the design industry and the art world is that no one cares about your background. No one cares about who you are unless you make that part of your identity. All people care about is the work and how it looks. They don't care what college you went to. They don't care what software you work on. They don't care how much money or how much time you put into your work. They just care about how the work looks when it's done. So get a free trial of Photoshop, get a free trial of Illustrator, go get PicMonkey or any of those free online services, use MS Paint, do whatever you want, print out stuff on and Xerox it and cut it up with some scissors and glue it back down on something, draw on your notebook and then post it on Twitter and Instagram. Um, do whatever the hell you want and whatever you're good at because that's what's going to get people's attention and that's all people care about post it frequently i hate that this is the thing but i've gotten the majority of my best jobs off of twitter sorry but it's true instagram twitter use them they are your tools they are your friends no matter what software you use no matter what kind of setup you have You can make beautiful, amazing art that people will want and will love. And as long as you put yourself into it and as long as you're doing it, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter where you're from and it doesn't matter how you do it. People will want it. People will, you will find an audience. I promise anyone can do this. That is the great thing about technology these days. We all have the power to do it in our pocket. So as much as I'm seeing stuff, on social media all the time about people decrying modern movie posters and saying, wouldn't it be better if we went back to the way they looked in the 80s and the 60s and the 90s and look how amazing the Strew Struzan poster is. It's like, yeah, that's fucking amazing and I love it. But at the same time, like, not everyone can airbrush. Not everyone can afford to airbrush. Not everyone can afford to gain these skills. However, there are so many skills that you can teach yourself at home right now Or you can just go play around with these tools mm -hmm. or you can just go sketch or you can do all these things. And that's viable. That's that's a job. That's a way of life. That's a way to make art. And you should fucking do it because you can. And we're all stuck in quarantine. We got nothing to do. Yeah. And, go make some art. And yeah, a lot of people have iPads. They have uh, iPhones or whatever. And you can always uh, use Adobe Fresco. It's for free, except the export mm -hmm. function, which costs like $10, $10, $10 a month or something like that. But uh, even without exporting, you take a screenshot. Exactly. Even without exporting, you can do so much and like you work uh work actually pretty pretty good and uh for not that much money and you can try it even as, as you said airbrushing i mean they have airbrush uh, pencils or uh, brushes in this kind of way probably mm -hmm. so do it try it out learn something i mean that's that's a that's a good t tip and a good way to do it just basically the nike slogan just do it yeah exactly i mean i use i use photoshop and illustrator and indesign and all of these stuff in the Adobe suite. But honestly, you can get an annual mm -hmm. package that's got a photo editor and and uh, Photoshop and a couple and Lightroom and portfolio and a couple other things mm -hmm. for about a hundred dollars a year. Exactly. And it's not uh, too much. That's, and like, I know not a lot of people can afford that even, but like, even that's not that bad and you can save up and you can work towards that. Mm -hmm. Um, And then you have literally every tool that every other designer has. The, exactly. the playing field is as leveled as possible. Yeah. That's right. Okay. So um, for our last question, or it's not even a question, but it's more the stage is yours. Uh, you could give shout outs to artists, friends, uh, your parents, uh, whoever you want. It's uh, your time to tell them uh, what you would like to do. And also in the end, please tell us where to find you or tell the audience where to find you. Yeah. Well, I got to shout out a lot of artists on here because They're amazing, and some of them you've had on before, but these people are great, and they've been very, very supportive mm -hmm. of me and of my art. 
and they do even better art than I do, so I should uh, send it right back. So Scott Soslow, who was your first guest, uh, you can find on Twitter at at Soslow underscore Scott. He's amazing. I sent you some pieces. Uh, Eileen, SG Posters. What more do I need yep. to say about Eileen? <laughs> uh, again, she's been on the show. She's fantastic. Yeah. I have to she's call her, by the way. Gift. Good good thing you mentioned her. Yes, so do I, actually. <laughs> I meant to call her yesterday and then I forgot. Um, uh, hers is uh, SG at SG underscore posters. Uh, Corey Brickley, uh, who is an amazing uh, designer out of Philly. He designed, he, I hired him to do a portrait of me earlier this year, which is now on a lot of my social media platforms. Um, he does a lot of amazing work with Aero Video. Um, his at is literally his name at Corey Brickley. Um, uh, Tori Quinn, uh, who did the amazing, amazing poster for One Child Nation. She's so freaking talented, and she has a podcast of her own, so I highly recommend that. Um, and then I also have to give a shout-out to my partner, Murky Schram, who is an amazing illustrator, character designer, and storyboard artist. Um, their at is at Fantas Markey, um, and their stuff is fucking gorgeous and so lively and fun and addictive um and god you're just gonna fall in love with their stuff so much <laughs> i did and then i fell in love with the artist perfect um, yeah i got i gotta give shout outs to all of them so find their art hunt their art down follow them on all the social media platforms yeah we will i will link him uh, i will link him of course as well yeah okay so yeah thank you uh, any more I, I didn't want to cut you off so no, I mean that those those are the important. Uh, those ones. especially, but but you you said parents, so I should give a shout out to my parents <laughs> as well. Okay. Fine. <laughs> okay, perfect. Thanks, Patty. <laughs> where where can people find your um uh, like on all the platforms? And also, you have a podcast. We didn't talk about that, but uh, maybe you should put that in there. Yeah, uh, you can get my the majority of my art over at my website, which is sisterhydesign.com. Get in touch with me there. See all of my stuff. Dig through like literally hundreds of pieces uh, in my graveyard and in my um, like archive of work. Um, and then I'm on Instagram and Twitter at Hyde Sister, which is the inverse of it. Um, and then, yeah, I also produce and edit the podcast Dead for Filth with Michael Verratti. We just dropped our 100th episode Oh, congratulations um, last week thank you um which was a round table of a bunch of different queer horror podcasters together there was like 12 of us <laughs> it's not a fun time to edit yeah, it was a fun that's time a to lot be of up. people <laughs> it's it's a great 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 show and we interview um writers directors actors we had um Veronica cartwright from alien and psycho um not the birds um and invasion of the body snatchers and we had jeffrey ruddick who created um Final Destination franchise and amazing, amazing, amazing people in the film industry to talk about themselves, their work, and being um, a part of queer culture and horror culture at the same time and what that means uh, at an, as an intersection. It's great and I highly recommend it. Okay, perfect. Um, Drew, thank you very much for stopping by. It was a pleasure to have you on and it was a great talk. I really had a nice conversation and uh, I encourage everybody out there to check out uh, Drew's art and also um, check her podcast out if you're into horror because this is probably uh, for your liking, I'd say. And uh, thanks to all the listeners and viewers out there. Tune into our next episode and don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on our IG page at DropMacOfficial and Leave us comments, shout-outs, topics, or questions for our next show. Okay, guys. Bye.